Welcome back, another episode, another rant. Today, I've got something that I felt was probably uh, worth coming and chatting about for a quick second. Typically on these rants, I've got something that I, I try to say to coach, but this one isn't so much to coach as much as it is encouragement. Um, as many of you guys know, I work for a company here in Utah called Domo. Uh, and for Domo, I uh, run the, the mobile UX side of things uh, where we work on their iOS and their Android apps. Uh, it's pretty fun, pretty awesome. And recently I had the opportunity to get a couple more people on board joining the team. I blasted out a message on LinkedIn telling people I was looking for uh, interns uh, to jump on board the team and learn a little bit more about mobile UX. And I was, uh, first off, I was kind of blown away by the response. I, I had 30 some applicants that uh, I started going through within the first week. Um, and just, again, blown away by the reaction and the response that we got from people. We're really uh, humbled by that. Uh, but let me talk a little bit about these candidates because that's what this is all about today. Um, 30 candidates or so came in looking at getting their foot in the door with a mobile UX internship. Pretty sweet. These candidates, as I started to vet them out, um, one of the things that became very apparent to me uh, was that their resumes all looked, for the most part, identical. Um, you know, they'd be going down their list of, uh, experience. They've got schooling. They've got a couple projects, uh, all these projects they've done in school. Maybe they've done a little bit of freelance stuff, uh, but nothing real concrete, nothing that really makes them stand out with a couple years of experience. And that's kind of the situation that everybody was in now it's cool, but how do you stand out in this crowd? Um, I want to talk a little bit about that, but first I want to just make a quick note about those candidates who we did vet. If you're one of those candidates who I've talked to over the last month or so, first off, props to you. You guys were amazing. You, you were really standout candidates. Uh, there's there's only one or two of you that uh, I wasn't very impressed with, but yeah, forget that. Um, if, if <laughs> those candidates probably aren't listening to this anyways. Uh, but for the most part, all of those candidates that I've talked to were just kind of you know, outstanding, great potential candidates who I know a couple of them already landed some internships since then. A couple of them have landed full-time gigs since then. Uh, if, that's what I expect. These guys were really great uh, individuals uh, with a lot of talent. Unfortunately, with the internship that we were looking for, I was only hiring two people. And so how do you whittle down this list of 30 people down to two? You've got to cross out a few people on your list who are amazing candidates who just unfortunately weren't going to end up at Domo, probably for our loss. Um, but let me talk a little bit about what helps some of these candidates stand out. I recognize that everyone's resumes look pretty much identical. Great. It's a given. They either were coming out of like University of Utah, BYU, SUU, uh, University of Utah, um, or Dev Mountain. And outside of University of Utah, those other colleges that I mentioned don't really have UX programs. Uh, they've kind of got all these little makeshift courses to become a UX designer. That's cool. And for those who came from graphic design backgrounds, I didn't hold that against them. I hold it against the colleges for not having UX programs yet. Uh, a couple candidates came out of UVU uh, where they were studying uh, UX or they had already graduated from UX. And then probably half of them, I'd say, all came from Dev Mountain where they had a 13 week, I believe it was 13 week curriculum in which they studied the ins and outs of a design process uh, specifically around UX. Cool. That's the foundation. That's kind of where everyone's at. What made a couple candidates stand out more than others uh, wasn't necessarily, do you have one or two years of experience that we can draw off of? Uh, for me, it was how much work have you put into getting other experience? And if you're saying to yourself, okay, that's fine, but I'm not a freelancer who's going to go drum up new business. That's cool too. You don't have to do those things in order to get new experience. It is easy as going online and looking up uh, a UX, create a brief and just working on something. And I suggest for those who don't have a very strong portfolio and are looking to uh, land their first UX gig, come up with something, anything. Just let me see that you've done something outside of just your projects in school that is allowing you to get more experience underneath your belt. Uh, I three or four projects in your portfolio that came out of school, great. Let me see three or four more that you took the initiative and you did it on your own uh, to see a process from beginning to end. No, it's not gonna be perfect, right? You missed the part about collaboration, you missed the part about having data, or you missed the part about having um, 
users that uh, you know use this made up app. Yeah, I get all of that, but do something because that initiative that you show really is what helped a couple of our candidates stand out. Um, what else did I want to say? For those people who came from graphic design backgrounds and didn't really have the UX experience, you guys have a great shot at getting UX experience in the future. One of those things I want to recommend though is uh, getting yourselves more ingrained with a, a traditional UX process. Look into a couple platforms or softwares that are going to help in UX. Uh, I know there's a couple people who have never opened up Sketch or Envision. Not saying you have to have those two apps underneath your, your tool belt, but at Domo, it's what we use. So without having that experience, it was hard to say, okay, well, you're more qualified than the candidates who know how to work those programs. Um, so learn a little bit about the programs, the softwares, the, the curriculum, uh, or I'm sorry, the, uh, uh, the, the, the design process uh, as far as UX goes. Study those things out, learn a little bit more about them. There's books, there's podcasts, there's articles, whatever you need. Uh, the options are out there. Show initiative and get after it. Um, what else did I want to say? Oh, there was this idea that I kept coming up with as well that, um, you know, kind of took me by surprise as well. After talking to a lot of these uh, UX designers that were coming out of school, one of the things that caught me by surprise was the fact of uh, how thoroughly studied up they were. Uh, and I think that's amazing. It's great. There's more UX material now as far as in the education space than there was when I started doing UX a few years back. Uh, I never had the traditional education of UX like a lot of people who I uh, interviewed have right now. Uh, and that's only going to increase. The, the candidate pool of UX designers coming out of school is only going to increase. And for those UX designers who have been in school, I'm sorry, for those UX designers who have just been in uh, the field and didn't go through UX curriculum, all we've got going for us right now is just experience. And that's cool right now. But in five years, these designers who just came out of Dev Mountain or just graduated from UVU's UX program, they're going to have five years of experience plus a more traditional education. And I think these ca these candidates are going to be able to compete. Uh, so that, I guess, is almost a warning to those UX designers who uh, have just kind of gotten into UX because of the time and the place. Make sure you're always refining your craft. Make sure you're always studying up because in a couple of years, we're going to have candidates with the same amount of experience uh, that you do right now. Uh, and they're going to have a more formal education. And in a field in which things are moving so fast and so rapidly, your seven or eight years of experience doesn't help you stand out that much more than somebody with five years of experience. So continue to stay on your craft. For those of you who are coming out of school, keep grinding. Uh, I know a lot of people have come and said, how do I land in my first position? It is a madhouse and I feel for you. Again, when you've got programs like Dev Mountain pumping out new students every 13 weeks, the, it's a supply and demand thing, right? There's only so many UX positions that uh, will be coveted. And, you know, the rest of them, you just got, you got to make do. You got to find your way to battle through it. Uh, more and more candidates are going to be uh, saturating the market as far as UX design goes. Uh, and there's only going to be so many positions available. Find a way to get your advantage. Find a way to take your lead. Uh, I think that's it. I think that's it for rant number three. Am I keeping it under 10 minutes? Looks like it. Uh, I'll wrap it up. It's a bit of a longer rant. Uh, if you have questions or if you're one of those candidates who's thinking, you know, my portfolio is not strong enough, reach out. Uh, there's a lot of material out there in the, in the world already. Uh, but if you want uh, somebody to chat with about it, feel free to reach out, uh, whether it's through my email or through LinkedIn, whatever it may be. Reach out. I'd love to give a, a hand or offer whatever help I can. Uh, again, to those candidates who applied for the internship at Domo, thank you. You guys were great. Uh, for the two that we hired. We're excited to be working with you guys and uh, good things to come. All right, everyone, that's it for today. You can take it or leave it. That's rant number three. Okay, I'm jumping into this. This is rant number three. I think it's three. This is rant. This is a rant. This is rant. I am Groot? No, I'm starting over. This is rant number three. And on today's rant, nope. Starting over again.